see that uh, a couple of people already uh, uh, answered the, 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 the first question before I even was able to ask it about it. It's a kickoff question to see, uh, to make sure that you were able to get to the Mentimeter. Um, we have not that many participants. Uh, Shoipa, I cannot see it right now when I'm sharing my screen, but you can probably see how many people we have yeah. left. 25 at the moment. 25. Uh, and we have now, um, let me move up this a little bit. We have 18 uh, replies to the first question. Um, so if i may react first to to this slide but i would like the panelists also to um, uh, to react to the to all the uh, the other slides um it is perhaps not surprising with the limited number of people that are still here that there is uh, nobody that is disappointed because i'm i suppose that those who were disappointed did not connect um, a few of us are getting tired, but uh, uh, of those who are here, they still are looking very positively about what is going on. And uh, well, there is also one person here who sees a lot of opportunities um, with uh, dollar signs in his eyes or her eyes. But let's move on to the, the first um, serious question. And that is, to what extent do you think there is enough attention um, and support for research software regarding the development and operation, the maintenance, the preservation, and the reuse? And you can score any of those four um, things. We see the scores coming in. We have 11 by now. But I would say this is not a scientific um, survey, um, but still it is providing some indications of what the mood is. And um, Ah, who are the panelists, uh, asks uh, Ben Companion, and the panelists are the speakers of this morning. Um, but um, given the fact that we are, a, I, will, I would like to invite them first to, to give a reaction if they, if they have one, um, but uh, then the audience could also react if they, if they um, uh, would like to, to say something. So is there one of the speakers of this morning who would like to comment on the trend that you see here? It's Michelle Barker here. I, I would only say that, yes, interesting that software maintenance is, is the lowest. I think it's a very common major concern. And it's interesting this group still, uh, still puts it slightly lower than uh, the others, given that we've just heard about a range of things that are aiming to address a whole range of software sustainability issues that we still think software maintenance is mm. and wasn't it Ale focus. And wasn't it Alexander who said that um, um, there is much more attention to develop new software than to reuse existing software? So that we also see in this in this graph. And Ignacio wants to say something. You can unmute. Yes, yes, indeed. I mean, uh, I will also totally agree with uh, the, the numbers. And I think that the, I mean, in the funding criteria for many 
not of software and other things as the services we are encouraging to uh, increase new users to develop new things rather than uh, preserving the, the the current users i mean i've seen for example in not only in software but also in services that the uh, keeping users a lot um, i mean using the services developed in open science is not as well as funded as increasing the portfolio of users which it's uh, i mean it should also consider keeping the, the users we have happy yeah thank thank you martin um so yes i think it uh, at least from my point reflects what uh, we all your hands may be covering your microphone oh, wait um well do, just speak on and, and now uh, now it should be much better better yeah. um it, uh, it th I think it's, uh, it, it reflects what we all experience in, in, our, uh, in our work. Uh, what I'm surprised is to see that software development and operation really is ranked that high and possibly um, it's something that we should uh, look a bit more into detail because of, yes, software development nowadays is considered in, in, in research programs and research projects. Uh, but when we look at the engineering part of software engineering, according to, I would say, um, state of the art um, procedures in software development, then I'm not sure if we, if, if we really can rank it that high. Kostas? Yeah, I just wanted to say that, uh, for example, if you take um, our, our uh, grants in the European Commission, uh, it's often very hard to address uh, what happens after the project has ended, which may be a, a sort of loophole there that we have to, to address, of course, with the help of the community. But um, if a project, let's say, typically is funded for, for three years and a piece of software is developed, then after, th after that time, we, we, let's say, as a funder, we don't have the means to keep uh funding for the maintenance or for the mm -hmm. preservation of, of that piece of software perhaps this has to be factored in when the beneficiary is asking for for funds uh during the grant mm -hmm. so that there is some some money that can be used for that but it's often not the case so the perhaps the from the side of the funders this is something that we have to think about mm. um what was mentioned yesterday in one of the discussions, though, is that uh, not every piece of software perhaps uh, needs to be preserved for eternity. And there is a sure. huge diversity in, in software uh, types and categories, um, including prototypes, for instance, um, uh, which are uh, uh, clearly of a different class than, than other types. Exactly. We, we, we move on to the next um, slide. We have 10 in total. Um, so again, a kind of a ranking um, question. Where should research software practice be in 10 years from now? Um, the first statement says there will be a full-fledged international or European software sustainability infrastructure. The second says, fair practices with respect to software will be generally obeyed. Um, the third one says, research software engineers have similar career opportunities as researchers. And the fourth and final one, research software and data management get similar attention in academic curricula. And by the way, this is a good moment to say that we what we try to do is to um, incorporate questions that people have put when they registered um, uh, in this Mentimeter, um, but also took into um, uh, account what, uh, what the speakers in uh, this morning session um, uh, have said. And um, in particular, Martin has supplied uh, quite a, a variety of questions that we somehow try to incorporate here. And um, well, this is almost a um, uh, hundred meters um, at the Olympic Games with um, very close, uh, clo very close finish. Um, with which, if 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 I uh, kick off. Um, 
would say that uh, all these things seem to be important somehow, um, or the audience believe that should be realized by then. I see Shoip who wants to react. Yeah, I just interesting because in, in the in the shaded area behind the number, you can see that there's there's a huge degree of variation. Mm. So that's quite interesting. There's, there's I mean, there's, there's quite a variation in opinion, which might be interesting. To explore. <laughs> But although the, the differences are, are, are not that big, um, still it is remarkable that uh, uh, the treatment of research software on par with, uh, let us say, data management, so to have research software management plans and, and so on, um, um, that that gets a, a higher score than a, a full-fledged um, software sustainability infrastructure, whatever form that may take, of course, perhaps that was also formulated too abstractly. Any other panelists who wants to say something on this or somebody of the audience, perhaps just raise your hand and I will give you the floor. Ignacio? Yes, I mean, um, insisting on what Shaib said, I mean, it seems that the, there is much more agreement on the second part. I mean, trying to, to, to interpret it, the, the curve, right? Uh, the fair practice is more, most of the people are around the seven, but there are much, uh, there are less uh, agreement in the, in the first and the third, huh? clearly. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems that even the, the, the score is higher, there are more, the people are, Agree more that has some level of priority uh, the that the fair practices with respect to sovereign generally of it mm. rather than the full fledged international. I mean, you can see that there are people that score the maximum and other people that score very low. Mm. So that's that's really interesting. Yes, Ben. Well, um, I was one of the people who said, um, for example. I'm not sure that research software engineers have to have to have a similar career path as a researcher because I'm a research software engineer and I'm generally better off than some of my colleagues in research. I don't <laughs> have to always work weekends and nights uh, to get my work done. Mm -hmm. I have a permanent contract. Uh, so I don't have to prove well, work extra hard to to uh, keep my job in that sense. So, yeah, maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm uh, just lucky. Um, but I, yeah, uh, I feel like the researchers have um, uh, uh, are worse off when in, in terms of to always prove and do new things uh, to get. Uh, to get ahead. Yeah, this, also, this raises, sorry, sorry, Ben. No, finish your sentence. Well, uh, um, yeah. Also, I, uh, I'm pretty sure that the SSI is doing uh, great work. But I'm not always, not necessarily sure that uh, we need more organizations or uh, bigger organizations to, mm -hmm. uh, to to get ahead in uh, sustainability. Thank you. There is two reactions, and I also need to keep an eye on the clock. So uh, please be brief, Ignacio, in your reaction to this. And very sure, very sure. I agree with Ben with the part of the career. However, the part of the scientific contribution is quite much harder for the mm -hmm. people that are developing software that the researchers. Mm -hmm. Clear. Uh, Shuip? Um, it's just a is the passage of time and career paths, you know, where you are in relation to your peers might not be the same place in 10 years time. There might, there might be greater opportunities for um, researchers, whereas what are the opportunities going forward for research software engineers? You know, we don't want to be, them to be developed in the, in the academic sector and suddenly decide to jump ship at age 45 because there's nothing left for them. Mm. Um, and 
one of the and just to answer another another point maybe <laughs> sli slightly defensive point is that one of the reasons that research software engineering jobs exist and become more recognized is because of advocacy advocacy so advocacy in some format is is uh is going to be an ongoing concern you might not see the immediate impact of it but it is having an impact if i'm not mistaken ben isn't 45 yet um so uh oh. we we are interested to hear from him, him again when that is the the case whether how he sees his uh, his prospects uh, by then but i've seen quite a few research software engineers uh, move to industry after a couple of years in academia simply because there were better prospects there than in the uh, in the in the science system let's move over to the next question do you think there is a need for well ben already answered uh, a need for software sustainability infrastructure european or worldwide We must, of course, be aware of the fact that we might have a prejudiced uh, audience here. Uh, the tendency is clear, but there is also some people who say explicitly no or don't know. Um, any of the panelists that have an opinion? Or would those who said don't know or no, would they want to explain why i see martin so yes i think there's also still the definition of an infrastructure what we understand uh, as software sustainability infrastructure mm -hmm. and when we look at the human part from my point of view there are many obvious things uh, where possibly many of us and also the researchers agree um that uh, such an infrastructure is required because it's 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 uh, people who uh, mainly are involved in, in passing skills for example providing the necessary ser services and the research projects um uh, so uh, I, I i think it's still something where we have uh, come up with a clear definition of what we understand what an infrastructure or a software sustainability infrastructure is um and once we have that um, it's possibly easier to argue for it or say that it's a fundamental part Although you give, gave in your talk uh, uh, quite a good overview of the different, um, let us say, possible tasks of such an infrastructure. And uh, of course, um, it's difficult to reflect that all in a simple question uh, like here. Um, I see no other hands. If I may say, um, I have some sympathy for those who, who, who say we should be aware that we are not overstressing um, the role of infrastructure in the sense of uh, huge organizations um, but it seems also clear to me that um, in comparison to what is going on in let us say the the, the library and, and open access world for publications in what is going on in the data world that um, what is available in the in the realm of software is simply so at, at uh, uh, lagging behind and that um, um, there is a couple of really fundamental issues on the table, many of which were discussed during the conference, that needs a, a form of organization. And let us not forget that in a way there is there is very few nationally organized um, software sustainability institutes like in the UK. And so this is perhaps also a uh, an opportunity to, to organize things from the start more internationally. And of course, there would be, it would be necessary to have local or national anchor points, um, but it could also be perhaps more efficient. Um, as we see, for instance, also with Software Heritage, which started as an initiative in France, but which has developed um, 
originally on a shoestring um, into um, a world leading and massive uh, uh, software archive. So, oh, I have now to move on to the next one. Uh, which says what should be the priority tasks of a software sustainability infrastructure. So perhaps I should have asked this question before the, the previous one. Could you rank order those tasks? There is not much happening yet on my screen. Um, is anybody experiencing technical difficulties here or? No, I think it's no. just time lag. Uh, yeah, it is a time lag. I've, I've seen that before, especially with questions of this type of the rank order, uh, rank ordering. Perhaps also that requires more thinking. And while the voting is uh, still going on, I see uh, a raised hand by Raniere. I'm curious to know about like the certification of uh, software. Do people see this as like auto organizations promote certifications like the Linux foundations and uh, I Studio in terms of certifying that as also as a way to like then to get incoming and support the uh, uh, institution. Uh, but sorry, can you say again, did you think that needed more more attention or were you critical about that? Or you yeah. saw it as a different thing from um, from the, 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 the fair? Uh, no, I'm curious to know what people that answer, like rank this one higher, because I put this like one of the top priorities, mostly because it's a way to uh, make the institution sufficient financially uh, because of other models that institutions had followed. But I don't know how other people see this, who, who for, based on people who put higher hmm. or people that put lower in terms of the priority. Hmm. I think most, most folks have been cast now. So if there is a reaction from the panel uh ignacio yes so i i also agree that it should have a higher i mean i also rank at a higher level um but i mean certification is a strong word i think that uh, providing means to verify the fair principles is very important i mean there are efforts in projects like eoc synergy in which i am involved also peter on creating fair evaluators in which you can with a some degree of automation verify some of the criteria of the RDA, for example, or the fair fair, which also developed Fuji. And I think that this will be interesting. So I, I, I'm not saying that certification from an external body that put the stamp would be the best approach, but have some tools for certifying or for validating uh, the fulfillment of the principle will be very important. If we look at both extremes, then it seems community building ranks at the top and preserving software code on the bottom. But this, this last thing doesn't necessarily mean that it isn't important, but people may think that um, uh, preserve preservation of software code has already been covered by um, 
software heritage and also by Zenodo, by the way, that is uh, also archiving a lot of software codes and other other repositories uh, have a task there as well. Would anybody have an idea about that, Martin? Um, I, I think also it's uh, it, it's uh, shown a bit like so there are three groups for me at least um, one two and third place are the first group and at the very last the uh, um, sustainability projects and the preservation of software code clearly shows that these are also completely different things from my point of view and uh, the result uh, reflects that the first things should come first, you know, mm. and uh, preserving software is, is one thing. It's a sort of archiving, uh, also uh, supporting the sustainability of the projects is something um, that uh, might be needed in the beginning, but uh, possibly something that uh, must not necessarily be taken or supported or funded when we look 10 years ahead, because it might be part of uh, standard practices. And this is what we possibly look at when we look at sustainability, which is also uh, a word nowadays in, in completely different contexts, then this is uh, really about uh, awareness, uh, creating standards, uh, using best practices, getting some guidelines to that, um, having clear rules that uh, things are possibly also mandatory and not just optional. And this is what the first group of the, of the first three places from my point of view reflect. Thank you. Um, Shuip, how are we doing time-wise? Time because I cannot look at the program uh, and, uh, and share my screen at the same time. So we've got about 24 minutes. Okay, that seems okay. We move over to the next question. If there were such an international software sustainability or European SSI, how should it interact with existing related programs or areas of work? Um, and there is a couple of uh, options there. There might be more. It should be part of and governed by the EOSC. This is obviously true for a European one and not necessarily for a further international software sustainability infrastructure. It should be an organization of national members. It should be independent, um, uh, like an, uh, an S3 ERIC, which by the way also has national members, but it should be set up and managed by the uh, software engineers. It should be part of an existing research data organizations, or it should be a task of the research domains and also be organized along the domain uh, lines. And the distribution is um, wide. We're waiting for a couple of votes to come in. Ah, but Martin in the meantime has raised his hand. Or is this an old hand, uh, Martin? Yeah. I think most votes have been cast. Uh, I don't see a hand yet. Um, 
I will kick off. And for me, it is remarkable, but not un unexpected that um, not many of the voters uh, seem um, it to be a task of existing research data organizations. And uh, I didn't vote myself, but I, I tend to agree with that. Um, the position that my organization does, I, I, I realized that I completely forgot to mention that at the start of the, of the meeting that I represent data archiving network services in the Netherlands, um, thinks that this is an important thing to do, but not necessarily by, by, by us. Um, um, so we like to promote it. Um, we are very much interested in it, but um, we don't see it as an essential task of a data organization, which also doesn't necessarily have the skills that are needed um, in, this, in this area. Tom? I, I find this graph really interesting um, because uh, Really fundamentally, uh, what's going on here is a discussion of uh, ownership and responsibility, which mm -hmm. I think is actually the really the key issue when we talk mm -hmm. about software sustainability is who is responsible for this stuff, who's accountable for it, uh, and who should be consulted around this or, you know, uh, the racy matrix, if you've, uh, if you've heard of that particular con construct. And across these, I see different stakeholders who, uh, you know, depending on where you're coming from, might fulfill one of those roles. So ultimately, uh, it's reflecting uh, who we think, uh, I assume, uh, is the uh, is, uh, is responsible um, for handling uh, software sustainability. Otherwise, they shouldn't be uh, essentially the key organizational uh, grouping um, for handling software sustainability. Um, I would have liked another option, uh, which might have been something that was a little bit more diverse rather than picking one as the winner. Um, but uh, yeah, those are my thoughts. But, but what, what option would you have liked? Uh, uh, well, uh, something that would have allowed for uh, ownership, responsibility and accountability to emerge, uh, right? Um, so... Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, I would say that the relationship between re research domains and the software that they require is uh, is completely valid, but quite different to uh, the relationship between the producers of that software. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then uh, also, uh, well, I'm assuming national members, um, uh, uh, sorry, let me see. At best, um, something like EOSC um, might be a, a difficult kind of um, uh, uh, ownership relationship amongst all of those. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe I'm thinking national members is is the one I'm thinking of because that's mm -hmm. that's pretty much uh, doesn't express um, which specific members. Uh, yeah, and, and again, it's <laughs> the question is a bit generic. Yeah, although uh, uh, I apologize that it is a bit Eurocentric here as well. Um, but um, Martin would like to react. Uh, I very much like the first, the third, and the last uh, one because uh, they uh, clearly refer to dependencies or uh, being not independent or being independent of something. And um, I'm a bit surprised to see that software sustainability shouldn't be that much a task of research domains because I think, as, as Tom mentioned, it's, it's a matter of ownership. And, uh, when we try to find analogies of uh, our real life, which are discussed right now, then we can also look at our globe and the climate change and that we're talking about sustainability there. Uh, what was done over the last decades and what should be done in the next decade uh, to make our place uh, a place that's worth living. Um, then when looking at this analogy, I think uh, the research domains are definitely those uh, who have the ownership, because if they are not taking care of this for themselves, 
um, then this was, would be a, a clear waste of resources from my point of view. And it also means that something like that is not just happening from alone. If there's much pressure, then yes, but if there isn't much pre pressure, then there, well, it, uh, there might be no breakthrough like we would like to see it maybe in 10 years uh, latest. And uh, it means that then the ownership, from my point of view, clearly lies in the research domains and the pressure must come from some dependencies um, that uh, maybe is clearly linked to the USC and thus also to the European Commission. Um, so um, the result here didn't reflect from my point of view what I think. Is, is there any ideas within the European Commission or in the EOSC how it sh should be organized? Uh, Ignacio or Costas, would you have a reaction to this? Well, I think that, um, I mean, I think that the, the role of the EOC shouldn't be to, the EOC association shouldn't be to manage everything. So I think that the, uh, having external uh, agencies is, I mean, dedicated to the specific task and have coordination will be the best, I think. And also I think that the national support will be key because I mm. mean, the funding models that we are approaching mm. is based on, on national contribution. So mm. uh, I will be more in favor of this, this approach rather than, yeah. Mm. Mm. But that's my view. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, I mean, there is a difference between being governed and being federated under EOSC mm. uh, uh, probably. So. Um, but we'll see how, yes. how things turn out. So if I can add uh, to what Ignacio yeah. said. Yes, uh, In fact, a few of these options uh, are not independent of each other. So yeah. meaning they can be combined or they can mm -hmm. one can be the evolution of the other. I mean, if you look a uh, clear example of what happened with Elixir starting as an S3 and mm -hmm. then becoming an organization with national members, right? So, so you know, some of these can be combined and uh, for EOS, perhaps an advantage is that you don't start from from zero, as many national organizations are are part of the association. But mm -hmm. indeed, it doesn't mean that uh, the potential institute should be under EOS. But rightly, as you said, Peter, also a federation can can be possible. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. With a few on the clock, we move forward. Um, how can the EOSC best support software sustainability? If, it, uh, although we heard that of, to, to some extent it is already doing so in its, in its reports and in its, uh, in its policy. Now, I apologize, but I don't remember whether I made this uh, uh, a question where you could have multiple options or just one. Um, is it just one? Uh, would have been better to have multiple options because uh, it's no, not it's necessary. No, it's multiple. I, you can vote. Yeah. It is multiple? It's multiple. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now I can see it because we have more votes than uh, participants. Sorry, as an Australian, I think I felt I only had one option. Um. <laughs> but it's good to see that nobody thinks that the EOSC does not pay enough attention. Um, and there is a, an interesting uh, stairs going down uh, the other options to help raise attention among policymakers is uh, clearly one that is um, that could help the audience thinks put it higher on its own priority list um, is apparently still possible but um, 
Isn't it the Japanese wisdom that there is always room for improvement? Um, create a special task force on this. It's not overly popular. And then there is two people or two votes that say, well, something else actually. I don't know if one of the, those who says, no, something else should happen, um, whether they can say something or otherwise, of course, Costas and, and uh, Ignacio are the ones that are invited to react to this. So in terms of the other, I did have an idea for other, which is EOS is a huge program of work, um, some technology, some research infrastructure, some exemplars, and it's been going on for a while. I mean, it would seem that it's a large enough ecosystem for uh, EOS to have its own kind of software sustainability strand, um, and maybe even RSE strand within the whole, so that those things are done well under that program of work. That is an idea that came to mind. Thank you. I see no hands and no further need for reactions. So we skip to the next one. And this is an open one where you uh, can type some suggestions. Um, what are major efforts everyone concerned about software sustainability should be aware of and potentially engage with? So here you could also type just the priorities that you see to work on. It is very interesting to see this range of uh, suggestions uh, as we could take it. Still also a kind of priorities emerge. Um, although it is less easy to immediately um, uh, analyze these outcomes because sometimes people use different words for more or less the same thing. Um, But still, from almost from the beginning, uh, software carpentries uh, was uh, something that uh, took uh, center stage, literally in this word cloud. Best practices and standards.
and around that we see a repro re reproducibility. Is there anyone in the audience that wants to, uh, um, among the panel and the, and the audience that would like to react or to say more about the suggestion that he or she did? If not, then I move to the next question. And that is a, a question for uh, about the role of the funders. What role should funders play in supporting the areas of concern of software sustainability? So to treat software as a first class research output on par with publications, to support software skills, uh, software skills development among researchers to recognize software related roles in research and replication result of results or to fund software sustainability infrastructure and again these will only give some indication about priorities Um, just a second, there's probably about 10 minutes left. Yeah, and I think we are uh, almost at the last question. I haven't numbered them, so I don't remember which one is the last, but <coughs> and I didn't really count, but I think we are almost done. No worries. And although we have a limited number of votes, it is surprising to see that uh, still trends emerge that um, are actually understandable and at least interesting. Uh, what, what strikes me is that um, simply to fund <laughs> comes out in third place, and, um, but to treat software as a first class research output, um, is seen as the most fundamental thing. And um, personally, I very much sympathize with that um, because uh, you could say, if that is the case, then everything will follow. Um, and I think also this, if, if I may make the anal analogy with uh, research data, I think also for a long time, it research data has been taken for granted. It was there, it was a kind of a side product, not so interesting perhaps, and it was good that part of it was preserved, but nobody really seemed to care until perhaps around 2010 or so that Nelly Cruz, uh, the former commissioner started to say things that data is the new gold. We saw big data coming up and people started to find data an important commodity, an important thing, and also an important output for research. What did she say? The, the goal of science or something, not the goal with the G, with the like coal, uh, the, the fuel of science, I should perhaps say. Perhaps now the gas, given this crisis that we are seeing emerging. Um, what do, you, do, do the panelists think about that? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with what you said, Peter, because uh, I think it's a matter of recognition as well. Mm -hmm. So the funder is not only, you know, to fund a certain activity and then full stop, then you stop there. But, you know, for our uh, program, how we evaluate the, the new proposals that are coming in, and if we pay more attention to things as software, then it creates a whole cultural change. 
And of course, it's not, it doesn't happen from one day to the next. That's why we are also careful of uh, sort of what is mandated and a legal obligation and what is a uh, recommendation. So, you know, trying to start uh, sort of slower, uh, if you wish, with uh, software and other uh, research outputs, but putting them there on the table and then following with uh, stronger policies once uh, people are also used to, to uh, work in this way. Yeah, so you, you said it is also a culture change it process, is. right? Yeah, I, see, yeah. I see that also. And it, it wouldn't work, I think, if you, if it, also if funders start just to, to fund things because they need the support of the scientific, they are often formed also by, or governed by the scientific communities. Of course, yeah. uh, Martin. Uh, yes, uh, in this question and in the question before, I, uh, when we look at the funders, I think one of the two most important things also from my point of view should be efficiency and reuse. I mean, these are the organizations who spend money to create greater impact of research. And then reuse mm -hmm. and efficiency is uh, certainly a very important aspect from their point of view. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you think that category actually should have been added to the answer categories? Yes, and it, yeah. it was also missing from, from, from us, from the participants in the question before. These were two words which were clearly missing there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The reuse. Yeah, reuse and efficiency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they were missing, but they are implied in, in FAIR, right? So you can say that indirectly, perhaps they were included, but you're right, it should be explicit. I think we are approaching the end, if I remember well. So what role do you think industry? It, it hasn't been mentioned often. Um, um, but what do you, what role do you think industry could or should play in improving software sustainability in research or creative projects? Should it play a role in the professionalization of academic software? Should it be the marketing and commercialization of successful software projects or should they not play any significant role? And should this be the responsibility of the community or communities? That's funny, it's becoming an almost uh, uh, equal triangle. Uh, given that the, the scale here is from negative to positive, I think uh -huh. I would solidly interpret that as everybody has no strong opinion on this one uh, whatsoever. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, we, so everything is in the middle, right? Um, um, and. Um, yeah, that is, I, I wouldn't know what, how to how to interpret this, um, other than what you said, uh, Tom. I mean, fundamentally could and should are very different words. Uh, uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, if it was just could in this question, uh, mm -hmm. I think you might have got different answers. Uh, and, and then should, I would hope at least. Yeah, you're right. Um, 
nevertheless, um, we we do see, of course, that um, uh, ac suc really successful academic projects have often turned into commercial project uh, projects, but not all of them. Many of them also stayed uh, open source, community driven, and so on, or some mixture sometimes. Um, so perhaps it's really hard to tell. Um, I think. I think one thing that's missing here is, uh, you know, research is conducted in industry uh, as well, uh, mm -hmm. and there are research projects um, sure. within uh, within industry that mm -hmm. result in tools that are used by research as well. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, I mean, I personally, from an Australian perspective, I think of research as being something that spans both academia, academia, and and industry. Uh, and mm -hmm. government and other areas as well. Uh, and so I think industry does play a part uh, mm -hmm. in this, um, they, even if they're coming from sort of fundamentally different place, if you like. Mm. But I think that um, also with these workshops, we haven't really uh, attempted much to reach out to industry. And this was also a bit of a testing ground uh, to see whether perhaps we should include industry more. Um, and you're, of course, right. Yeah, we could. But uh, it, it, this, this question was more intended as a shoot um, uh, uh, question. And um, in, in academ academia, there is often um, a kind of a distrust of what might happen um, if we include industry in, in these efforts uh, concerning software sustainability. Um, on the other hand, um, I know that also Software Heritage gets some support from industry. Um, so yeah, any other of the panelists who want to say something? And I saw a message by Neil, I think, in the in the Slack, but I, I couldn't really read that. Did that have to do with this um, slide, Shoei? Did you see that in the Slack? Yeah, he said, um, he said, good point. He was concurring with Tom. He says he's worked both the research parts of industry and the industry part of industry, and there's a broad range, just like in academia. Neil, please. Yeah, I was just kind of um, uh, agreeing, I think, with with Tom, and I think there's there's maybe something to be looked at here in terms of the way in which this community engages uh, with with all sections of industry and understanding why, for instance, there's a perception that um, that, for instance, industry either steals resources or has different incentives, because I think. Um, just like in academia, there are a broad range of different incentives for different people in the different roles in industry producing software. So, yeah, we, we treat it as one thing when I don't think it is. And um, if I may again draw the analogy with the data world, what we, what we see is that um, in the past few years, an increasing number of publishers, for instance, uh, and also big publishing houses, have moved into the uh, area of research data um, repositories and uh, things like Figshare and Elsevier's Mendeley data, and um, um, there is more, um, have been doing that, providing uh, also um, uh, platforms for sharing uh, research data like they originally did with um, research papers or, or publications. And uh, perhaps it's something that um, we also could give more thinking in the, in the future. Ben is saying something in the Slack, which I cannot see. Ah, now you see probably my Slack, but that is perhaps better to keep small. Oh, how do, do I get rid of that? Uh, Ben's just saying that the September RSE, September 
I don't know how you, how you pronounce it, um, conference, uh, series of talks throughout September. Um, it talked, uh, the Code for Thought podcast talked to three big industry players, cloud providers, and we seem to have had a lot of engagement with cloud providers over the year, over the years, uh, are trying to get a foot in the door. So there, there is folk who are receptive in Amazon Web Services and Microsoft and a lesser extent from my experience, Google, but others have had more interaction with Google than I have. There may be others as well. Okay. I think this was the last slide. 